Hello friends, today we are going to see how we can understand Zener diode as the voltage regulator in just 10 minutes. Yes, in just 10 minutes. Let me tell you, in this video only, we are going to see all the insights that are required to solve voltage regulator based sum. So before going to the Zener diode as a regulator, we must know some basic concepts of Zener diode. So let's see that one by one. So the first thing that we should know is that what is the basic difference between PN diode and Zener diode? I know you know that if PN junction is in forward bias then you are going to replace it by a short circuit when it is ideal. If it is not ideal then you are going to replace it by a voltage source with a forward resistance right. And if it is in reverse bias then you are going to replace it by open circuit right. Well for Zener diode in the case of forward bias it is same as of PN junction diode but in the reverse bias instead of the open circuit it is replaced by a voltage source. Yes due to this property only Zener diode is used as a voltage regulator in reverse bias. Okay so let's see the VI characteristics also. So you can see the forward characteristics of Zener diode it is same as of PN junction diode. Okay that is what we have seen here for forward bias it is same. But in the reverse bias, PN junction is act as an open circuit. It means that it will not allow any current in reverse bias. That's why it is also said that it is unidirectional device. While it's inner diode, it is called as bidirectional device because it will allow reverse current. The doping of Zener diode is adjusted in such a way that it can handle that avalanche current also by maintaining this breakdown voltage and this breakdown voltage is also called as Zener voltage. Okay, so you can see this is a VI characteristics of Zener diode. Only difference is in this reverse bias, you can see a PN diode cannot handle reverse current but Zener diode can handle and the voltage at which the Zener breakdowns it is called as breakdown voltage as well as Zener voltage. Okay so this was only the basic things that we should know is before starting the voltage regulator. Now we can start with the voltage regulator. Now we are going to see how we can check whether the Zener diode is in breakdown or not. So you can see this circuit is a basic Zener diode based regulator circuit. Here you have your Zener diode. This is a load resistor. This one is an input resistor and here you have given your input okay so the concept that we know is that for breakdown v in must be greater than vz but let me tell you this is a wrong concept or you can say it is a partially right concept this concept will be right only if rl is very much greater than r in why because if rl is very much greater than r in then most of the voltage drop will be occurred across rl Right, so there will be only small voltage across R in. So you can see R in will act as a short circuit. More specifically, it will act nearly short circuit. Okay, so at that time only this condition will be valid. But now you may be thinking that what concept should we follow? So the concept that we should follow is that for breakdown, we should check VO. If VO is greater than VZ, then we will say the Zener is in breakdown. If it is not, then our Zener will not be in breakdown. So let's see the proof of this also. For that let us consider that V in is a small positive voltage and you can say Zener is not breakdown yet. So now you can calculate VO from voltage divider rule. So you will get VO as RL upon R in plus RL into V in. Okay, so this is what I have written here. Also, you can rewrite this equation in terms of V in that V in will be equals to R in plus RL upon RL into VO. You have just shifted this term here and you got this equation. Let me clear you once again why we are saying that for breakdown of Zener diode VO must be greater than VZ. We know that for this Zener diode to be in breakdown the voltage across this Zener diode should be greater than its breakdown voltage right. So you can see the voltage across this Zener diode is nothing but the output voltage okay. So that's why we will say if VO is greater than VZ then only our Zener is going to be breakdown okay. So this is what I have written here if VO is greater than VZ then only Zener will get breakdown. You can rewrite it as like this also. You can replace VO with this term and if you shift this term towards VZ you are going to get this equation. So what I am saying is you can write it as VO as greater than VZ okay and you can replace this VO with this term. So you will get RL upon R in plus RL into V in greater than VZ okay. Now if we shift this term towards VZ we will get V in is greater than R in plus RL upon RL 
into vz okay so this is what i have written here okay so you can use both the equation either this or this you will get the same thing okay still if you don't understand understand by this concept so let's take v in as 15 volt vz as 10 volt r in as 1k and rl as 1k what what we know that for breakdown of zener voltage across zener diode must be greater than vz okay so it is nothing but vo must be greater than vz and here you have calculated vo for small positive voltage when zener is not broke down it is rl upon r in plus rl into v now if you put all these values you will get 1 upon 1 plus 1 into v it is nothing but vo is 1 by 2 into v okay so if v in is 10 volt then you will get vo as 5 volt if it is 20 volt then you will get vo as 10 volt and we want that vo must be greater than vz so we can say if and only if v in is greater than 20 volt then only our zener voltage is going to break down here you can see we have a v in is equals to 15 volt which is less than 20 volt so we can say our zener diode won't be break down you can also verify this by this equation also we know that for breakdown v in should be greater than rl plus plus r in upon rl into vz if you put all the values you will get 1 plus 1 upon 1 into vz it is nothing but v in is greater than 2 vz so this becomes our condition for breakdown so you can see 2 vz nothing but 20 volt so if and only if v in is greater than 20 volt then only our zener is going to break down here you can see v in is 15 volt which is less than 20 volt so you can say our zener won't be break down for this case if let's say v in is equals to 22 volt then you can say our zener is going to break down now let's see the actual zener regulator operation regulation is divided into line regulation and load regulation in line regulation line varies it means that input voltage varies and rl is fixed while in case of load regulation load varies that means rl varies while v in is fixed now you may be thinking why am i wearing only these two parameters although i have a four parameters as you can see in this equation for breakdown v in must be greater than rl plus r in upon rl into vz right but the thing you should take note of it that vz is always fixed right once the zener diode is manufactured vz will be always fixed also input resistance is going to be fixed right only the load resistance as well as the input that we are going to provide will be varying okay so that's why we consider only this two parameter instead of all these four parameters okay now let's start with the line regulation in line regulation line varies our l is fixed and the circuit for line regulation is this one where you can see input is varying rl is fixed okay if you get an arrow on some source or an element it means that source or an element is of varying one so you can see we have an arrow so we can say v in is varying rl doesn't have arrow so rl will be fixed okay so this is a circuit that we must follow for line regulation in question if you get this type of circuit then you can directly say it will be of line regulation okay so while solving question it will be very much helpful so now we get to know that for line regulation line should be varying and rl should be fixed so if rl is fixed so we can say il should be fixed why because il is nothing but vo by rl so if rl is fixed so il must be fixed now let's come to the i in input current input current is nothing but v in minus vz upon r in okay so this is what i have written here now we know since it's a line regulation so v in will be vary so we can say input current will also vary since this two term is fixed only this v in is varying so i n will be also vary so from this equation we get to know that i in is in varying condition also from KCL you can get to know that I in is nothing but IZ plus IL okay so this is what I have written since you know that IL is fixed and I in is variable so IZ must be variable right to maintain this equation this is what I have written here since I in is variable and I L is fixed so IZ must be variable okay so take note of this also now coming to this important parameters this is the important because in the exam you are directly asked about this parameters only what is i in maximum what is i in minimum what is iz maximum what is iz minimum okay from the given circuit okay so i in maximum will be iz max plus il why because only i in and iz vary okay so for i in maximum iz should be maximum and for i in minimum iz should be minimum okay so this is what the two condition that you should take note of it okay now let's see for load regulation load regulation it means rl will be variable and input voltage will be fixed and the circuit corresponding to that is this one v in is fixed and only the rl is variable the arrow says that the element is variable okay so since here you can see rl is variable so il will be variable why because i L is nothing but VO by RL so if RL is variable so IL is going to be very 
now coming to this i in i in is nothing but v in minus vz upon r in okay so, but here we have a v in as fixed one vz and r in is already fixed so we can say i in will be also fixed so from this equation we get to know that i in is going to be fixed one in case of load regulation now from kcl we get to know that i in is nothing but iz plus il okay so this is what i have written here but since il is variable and we know that i in is fixed okay so to maintain this condition iz must be variable okay so we can say that if i l is maximum i z must be minimum so that i in is fixed and if i l is minimum then i z should be maximum such that i in is fixed okay so this is what i have written here if i l is maximum i z must be minimum such that we can get i in as fixed one if i l is minimum then i z should be maximum to maintain i in as fixed condition and if you want the relation between i l and r l we know that i l is equals to v o by r l so if i l is maximum then r l should be minimum if i l is minimum then r l should be maximum why because it is inversely proportional right so take note of this two condition okay this is very much helpful to solve the gate sum now the thing that we should note is that in no load condition no load condition it means that r l is infinity there is no load connected then i l is going to be zero why because i l is nothing but v o by r l okay so if it is infinity that it means one upon infinity is nothing but zero so you will get i l is zero so in that condition i n will be equals to i z okay so if this is zero it means that i in will be equals to i z only okay now let's see some useful power dissipation formula from which the direct question is been asked we know that power dissipation in any element is nothing but voltage across that element multiplied by current flowing through that element okay so for zener it will be pz equals to vz into iz vz is voltage across zener diode and iz is a current flowing through that zener diode okay and the unit for power is what right this is what we all know now if i say what will be the formula for maximum power dissipation maximum power dissipation it means the power dissipated should be maximum since we know that zener voltage is always fixed so for maximum zener current should be maximum why because zener current is variable but zener voltage is not variable okay. so to gain power as maximum iz should be maximum okay similarly for minimum power dissipation for minimum power dissipation iz should be minimum okay so this is the two important formulas which we should take note of it now coming to the power rating from this also question has been asked the first thing what we should note is what is power rating power rating is nothing but maximum power dissipation that can be handled by zener diode okay so we can say power rating is nothing but pz max and pz max is nothing but vz into iz max okay vz is fixed only iz can be variable okay so to get pz max iz should be maximum okay now in some question you get a term like minimum power rating okay so for this what we should take care is that minimum power rating is nothing but maximum power dissipation why because it is asking for a minimum power rating and we know that power rating is nothing but maximum power dissipation so minimum power rating will be maximum power dissipation that can be handled by zener diode okay so for minimum power rating formula also we are going to use pz max formula only that will be vz into iz maximum okay so if i sum up whole video first we have seen what is zener diode what is the difference between zener and pn diode then we have seen a vi characteristics of zener diode then we have seen how we can identify if zener diode is in breakdown or not then we have seen the two types of regulation then we have seen a important power dissipation formula okay so hope you understand all these things so that's it for today thank you guys Oh, 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 oh,